And let me step back. Good evening. I was trying to make sure that didn't ring. Well, it's good to have everybody tonight. I tell you what, I'm excited to uh, have our good friends, the McCrackens here. Uh, it's always a blessing to have them in. And, you know, I love I love the fact that they're out in the in the rodeo world that uh, ha and out with a bunch of people that we can't always reach. And I'll fiddle with that in a minute. And, uh, you know, there's something about us being a partner with these ministries that are out there like that. And that's one of the things that we prayed beforehand is that the things that we're able to do and uh, and the way that we're able to connect with some of these ministries that are not just going to other churches and, and singing, but they're actually going out to the areas and the places that we can't reach as a as a body and, and as individuals. And so I'm just very thankful that they're here. And, and uh, let me ask you a question. Are you expecting... Amen. Well, I tell you what, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, interested to know what all everybody has in their heart of hearts that the Lord is 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 uh, ministering to. Because I I think there's some things coming together tonight as we get ready to uh, to uh, begin this service. That I, I just think God has some special things in mind. So, who's going to open in prayer? Willie. All right. Heavenly Father, we just lift up this church tea tonight, Lord. We just consecrate ourselves to you. We invite you in this place. Lord, I just pray that, that the anointing comes over Pastor Kelly and he delivers the word exactly as you'll have it to, to be delivered and, and that you, you minister to the McCracken's heart so that, that they can deliver it in song. Lord, I pray that everybody that hears this carries it outside the four walls and gives you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, amen. Well, as y'all come on, uh, let's uh, let's make sure that uh, Gizmo and Janice are are given a warm welcome from Oklahoma. Amen. They're going to come and and sing and give us several songs. They can share just a little bit. I don't take too much time, but you can share just a little bit about some of the good happenings that they've been in some of the rodeos. Yeah, hey, right. You didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're tickled to be here. We was talking earlier about we uh, we were in Payson, Arizona, uh, a few hours ago, a day, a couple of days ago, I guess, and uh, we got out of there that morning and left, and it was like 60, 65 degrees, something like that, and man, it was nice. And we get in the bus and we get out in Amarillo, Texas. It ain't nice no more. <laughs> but the good thing about, you know, I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of old junk going on in our world today that we just can't close our eyes to. But the neat thing about it is no matter what's going on here, we know what's going on there. And, and, and uh, we just got to keep uh, hanging on to Jesus. And if he's all we got, he's all we need. Yeah. 
You guys seen that? She hit me right here on national television. <laughs> that's a skeeter. It is. That's what I said. My goodness. Yeah, I'll get most of them killed up here for you. If you're listening for that, you know, with, with the things going on in the world today, you know, you just can't, uh, you can't really deny that uh, they, they got to be warming that band up for that trumpet, and it's going to be a great. I uh, hope you all are listening for the call. And I'm excited that one day a man made a decision to do this for us. You can lock me up in a prison.
of the flesh, flesh and bones. Then to lay your trod down that lonely path that led to Calvary, where the blood red stains and broke all my chains and said that I could still go free. That I could still go free. Think about that. What kind of man will reach down his hand and do this for me? Oh, I was unworthy to live. There's nothing to give. But then a man on a cross, he put me in his will and said that I could still go free. All right, great to see everybody here tonight. I want to welcome you to Chisholm Trail Cowboy Church. Welcome those watching online. Uh, we want to thank uh, Dakota and Clarissa Davis for opening up the Enid Livestock Market to us each and every week to be able to have church in here. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I'd like to remind everybody that the cafe is open on church night. Good place to get a burger, support the family business, and... Uh, do a little bit of fellowship and before church. So, so they're open, come on out early and, and enjoy a meal. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have Larry DeWitter here. He is Barney Fife, DeWalder. I can't read my own writing. So, but he'll be here, Barney Fife, um, plays a harmonica and I mean, just a great show. He's, he's quite entertaining. So um, hope to see you all out for that. Um, I want to let everybody know, you know, COVID is in our community. If you've watched the news, if you flipped it on, you might have heard something about it. Uh, but we are taking measures here. Um, before the service started today, I went and used an electrostatic disinfecting gun and, and sprayed down the entire facility. So we'll be doing that every week before church service so we can uh, take appropriate actions. And, and if you feel compiled to wear a mask or, or anything else, you know, by all means, we support whatever your personal decision and choice is in, in how you protect yourself. Walk in wisdom, folks. Um, this Saturday, August 28th at 5 p.m., Full Armor Men's Ministry will be meeting at Camp Clearview, just down the road here, 132 towards Drummond, right after you cross Turkey Creek. If you look off to the left, there's some campers over there. So men, if you're free this Saturday, come on out, 5 p.m., Camp Clearview. September 23rd through the 25th, the men's ministry will be meeting at Romano State Park. Uh, that's a Thursday, Friday, and, and Saturday. So if you can come on out, you know, make some reservations at the lodge. They got camping spots. They got uh, RV hookups. Um, yeah, you got to make the reservations. So the, the men's ministry will provide a Thursday night meal, a Friday morning breakfast, a Friday night meal, and a Saturday morning breakfast. Uh, so Friday lunch would be on you, but there's a lot of things that we'll be doing. If you can only make one day, Friday's that day. We got some guest speakers coming from Los Angeles. Uh, JT will be there doing songs, so come on out on that. Uh, again, September 23rd through the 25th. For tithing, we got buckets at each one of the entrances. Um, if you want to mail in a, a gift or offering, it's 2504 West Owen K. Gary at number 317, Enid, Oklahoma, 73703. So as I was preparing my short little message for everybody, when I got home from work tonight, I found out that, that one of our members here passed away, uh, Mr. Barry Beckwith. 
Uh, he departed this world to, that we live in to be united with the Lord Jesus Christ and his wife of many years, Lenora. So, you know, when, when I first heard those words, my immediate reaction was to be sad. But as quick as that sadness climbed on me, I got a smile. And it's because I know where Barry is. So I've known Barry for several years. I've known his wife, Lenora, and I know that they walked for God without question. So I want to share Jude verse 20 with you. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. And then in Romans 2, uh, verse 6, God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who have persisted in doing good, seek glory, honor, immortality, and he will give you eternal life. I believe that Barry Beckwith has taken that step to eternal life. And my encouragement to everybody is we do not know when this is going to happen in our life, and it's to the folks online. If you have not made the Lord Jesus Christ your Savior, pay attention to the end of the service tonight when Pastor Kelly does that altar call. That is that first step to get to where Barry went. He is eternally living. He did not die. He just moved on. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Kelly. Willie, that's exactly right. And, you know, uh, I was in contact with Barry's uh, daughter, and uh, we were, we've been keeping tabs on him. And, you know, it, it's just been, it, it's really uh, a blessing when you, when you begin to think about it, but it's always uh, hard to let somebody go. But we do have also uh, Larry Simpson passed away uh, just a couple of days ago, so you might know uh, uh, Larry. Uh, so we'll be in prayer for the Simpson family. Uh, I got several others of these needs. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna begin to uh, take this this list. And Sue, I forgot to have you make a copies of these. But we're gonna we're gonna pray over these up at the top, and we're gonna give you a copy of these. And I'm not necessarily gonna go through this whole list and take that time to do that. But I, I can tell you this: we we spend time in prayer over these. If you put these lists on there or these names on there, I believe uh, that they'll be lifted up and and they'll be prayed over. I think one of the things that we need to do is uh, continue to pray over this nation. We need to keep the things in this nation going on, lifted up to God, and, and continue to stand. Uh, I'm going to teach tonight on prayer of agreement and just uh, talking about prayer and just talking about some of these things and, 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 and the importance of, of how we need to stand our ground where this nation is concerned, where individuals are concerned, and where our privileges and rights and benefits that God's given us are concerned. And so as we as we deal with life and, and all of the things that are that are laid out here before us. I know that uh, we want to stand for God in prayer. And uh, if you have prayer needs or anything like that, uh, whenever I, after I after I finish my sermon, we'll go up while the uh, McCrackens come back and, and they sing. But uh, let's go before the Lord and let's pray. Father, we just we just thank you that tonight is a is a night that we we just entrust this service to you. We we just bring before you. The needs that are listed, those that wrote them down will know who they are, and those who who uh, uh, desire to pray will get the list. And, and Father, we'll stand in agreement, we'll stand in prayer with these individuals. Father, we also stand for this nation. And Lord God, I continue to stand for the members of my churches, that, that Lord God, that those that I have uh, the ability or the opportunity to pastor, that Father, I stand for, for them to walk in the strength that you've provided, that their bodies would, would have strong immune systems, that they'd have wisdom to know what they need to do and how they need to care for themselves. Father, I thank you and I praise you that we are all... Uh, uh, putting our lives in and entrusting them to you. And Father, we refuse to make decisions based on fear. But Lord, I pray that we stand and have make decisions based on faith and based on wisdom. And Father God, I thank you and I praise you that it's not just what uh, talking heads are telling us, but Father, what you, the Word of God, are telling us. And so, Father God, we just continue to tr entrust these things to you. We thank you and we praise you that you watch over us to protect and keep us. We thank you, Father God, for those that, that are here tonight ready to receive, ready to hear you. That, Lord God, they'll, they'll, they'll not be disappointed. That, Father God, your word would, would shine forth. That, that, Father, they'd be stirred and challenged in their faith. And that, that, Lord God, we'd walk out of here better because we know you more. 
Now, Father God, we just pray over, over the offering of those that give in the buckets. That, that Father God, we just thank and praise you that you provide. You provide for this church. You provide for our needs. And Lord God, I thank you that when we demonstrate our trust in you, our faith to give into that, into that offering, that Father God, I thank you and I praise you that, that you don't hold or you're not slack on your word. Your word said that you'd meet our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, one of the demonstrations of our, our faith and our trust in you is to give of the first fruits of what, we've get, what you've blessed us with saying, Lord, we trust you to make our, our life able to succeed and, and flourish and have provision on, on what's left. And Lord God, we thank you. We praise you for the example of that. Uh, we see throughout the word that we put our faith and our trust in, and we stand in agreement with everybody who gives. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well. Listen, if you got a Bible, oh, before I forget, I did want to make, there's a, there's a survey for the women's ministry that uh, we've passed out uh, earlier. Uh, kids can be dismissed if there's kids here. I uh, don't know that there is that aren't already up there. But uh, there's a uh, women's ministry survey. Uh, some of you may have gotten this. If you didn't get this, if there, if, if uh, we'd like your input on whether or not we need or what we need to do where women's ministry is concerned, we don't have to have, uh, you know, everybody involved. But if there's some that value that and uh, need that as a ministry, my mom, wave your mom. Okay, well, my mom uh, is uh, one, or my wife, who's up there always hiding and I always pick on, but usually passes the p uh, prayer thing around. Uh, with the, the, let them know there's uh, these are available. Do you have? I don't know if you have them or not. I, I didn't know, but it's this little sheet. Fill that out, even if you say it's not anything that I'm interested in, or it's not something I value. That way, we kind of know and we can move forward. Also, don't forget, men, this this schedule for these. I know he's already mentioned it, but this this uh, time together is going to be coming up pretty soon. One thing he didn't mention: if you don't uh, have a place that like, you don't have a camper, you're not real big on camping out. There is a in, in the glory barn in the building that my, my dad and mom built. Uh, that's where we're going to meet. It's at the corner of the ranch there at Romano State Park. Um, we're going to there there. He's going to give us that whole building, and so there's rooms that people can stay in. They're not they're not hotel rooms. They're not nice. To, but you, if you bring a cot, you bring something to sleep on. You can stay there. And there's a couple of showers that can be used. It'll just be us guys there. So you're that's available if you'd like to do that uh, rather than or say your times change. You want to show up anyway that is available all the information's at our ta tables so make yourselves available of that all right well let's get into the word tonight I, I, i've titled this you're not you're not in this alone you know, you know, I, I don't know uh, if you've ever felt alone. I know sometimes whenever we're in in the midst of whatever we're in, we can feel alone. And and you know, I can remember at times being in a crowd of people, still feeling alone. And you know, the devil loves to work on our our our, our weakest point. He, he loves to find what were the what were the easiest to fall prey to. And turn to First Peter chapter five if you got to buy, if you got a Bible. If you don't, you can look it up on your phone, I guess. You can also uh, just let me read along, and, and that'll be okay too. Uh, I always pick on people with their electronic Bibles. That's okay. That's better than nothing. I just like for it, I just like to have the whole the physical thing out there. And I like when I pull it out, I don't get, you, you, ever, you ever be trying to read the Bible and be all spiritual on that? And then all of a sudden you get a Facebook notification or you get an email notification or something up there and it interrupts you? I am easily distracted. I don't need something that's popping up notifications, okay? I, my mind's wandering enough when I go to the Word of God. I need that physical Bible. So anyway, uh, see, squirrel. Oh, okay, anyway. But 1 Peter chapter 5, verse, verse 8 says, Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, and I'm going to pause right there, and I want you to just think about the picture that, this, that, that the apostle uh, Peter is, is, right, is, is picturing here. Are you all got a problem? Are you, are you standing for the word or what? Oh, okay. All right. Every, every time I read, y'all get your exercise. Amen. I, I got no problem with that. I just making sure you wasn't fixing to walk out or something. I said you st you still got to you still got to sing some more. Uh, be 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 alert and sober minded. So he's saying, be aware of something. 
You know, the apostle Peter was telling them, he says, look, there is an enemy. You have an enemy. And I think we need to be aware of this in the world that we live in today. You know, you go to some the, the, uh, uh, seminaries, some of these theologians, there's some of them will make an argument of whether or not the devil's real. I mean, believe it or not, there are some of the, the high-ranking, high-intelligent type people who would question whether or not the devil's alive. Well, I, I can tell you I've seen it. I've seen the devil at work in people's lives. I've seen people dominated by demonic activity. I've seen those types of things. I've also seen the effects of, of how the devil can come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Like Jesus said in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, The thief comes to, to kill, to steal, to destroy. He, you know, he also, he's, he's called the father of lies. You know, any time that we begin to hear a voice of, of anything that's contrary to the Word of God, we can just assume that that'd be the devil, and you ought to just laugh. You know, any time he says, you can't make it, you can't do this. Any time there's so many different things that the devil will come in, and, and, and in fact, he'll come, we were talking about this earlier, about some things where people get, get caught up in, a, in an occult or, or in a cult or something. You know, the devil sometimes comes as an angel of light. And you know what? we got to be aware and be understanding of, of what is right and what's wrong. And we, we can find it in the Word of God. That's why we study and, 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 and are aware of the Word of God. But he says, be alert and sober-minded. Alert and clear thinking. You know, sometimes we've got to cut through the clutter. We've got to cut through the noise. We've got to cut through the junk. Have you ever, have you ever heard, heard uh, something, that you're, something that you're listening to and you got, so you, you start, it starts out really good, starts out to sound right, and then all of a sudden it's it, it, it just like, wait a minute. How'd, how'd we, we started here and how did we get over here all of a sudden? See, we got to learn to be alert. We need to learn to be aware. He says, be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom or looking for somebody to devour. You know, he's looking for one. Now, who's he seeking or who's he looking for? You know, I'd, I'd just say he's, he's been, I heard a guy say one time, said, you know, the devil's like a, like a lion, but Jesus declawed and detoothed him. But he's still seeking somebody who he may devour. He's looking for somebody he can gum to death. <laughs> He's looking for somebody he can, just, well, he can just wait down long enough and slobber him to death, I guess. Waller him around. See, because, and we, that's kind of funny, except there's people being defeated by a toothless, clawless, powerless enemy because they're not aware of who it was. I really didn't plan on spending this much time on this, but this is pretty important. You see, because he comes in all different ways. He comes to deceive. He comes to divide. He comes to conquer. It saddens me whenever I had a conversation this morning with a, with a lady who called me, who I, I love, she loves me. But her, her idea of what's going on and my idea of what's going on are two directly opposite things. And the more we talk, the more I realize this conversation just needed to end because it wasn't going to end good. That's why I don't get into this a whole lot because of some of these things. But here's what we got to understand. We got to be careful that the devil, we don't allow the devil to continue to divide. When in, when in your lifetime, most of you all are old. I'm old enough to remember Jimmy Carter as president. Bean or a peanut farmer. Who would have ever thunk? And you know what? I remember those years now. Whether or not, I, don't, I know some of you are thinking, uh, well, I don't know what all of you are thinking, but I know what me and my family was thinking during that time. It was, thank God it was one term, I think. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just told you too much. But anyway, but here's the thing. We saw a transition. It went from that to first president I got to vote for, Ronald Reagan. And then we went in through these other deals. We've seen these shifts. But you know what? If you would have been in support of Jimmy Carter back then, it wouldn't have been a deal that we would have been unable to have a conversation. 
But the devil has come in to divide us to the point that we can't even associate if I find out you're from that party or you voted for that guy. And why is that? Because the devil will do anything he can to divide. We ought to still love one another, whether you're for the shot or not, whether you're for the Democrats or the Republicans. We got to still love them. That's why I stay pretty much out of that. Now, if you come to me and ask my opinion, you want to have a conversation, it won't take you very long to know where I stand. But here's the thing. I'm not going to allow it to divide me until it begins to rob me. See, and that's the thing that we got to be careful of. You know, everybody says, well, we got to love everybody. Well, we got to love everybody. But there's times when we got to stand our ground and not, not be duped by the devil. Amen. Now, I got close enough into the political thing. Y'all just ease up. Some of you is getting nervous. My wife included. She's up there going, oh, Lord Jesus, help him do you not say too much. <laughs> And, I, and I, want, I want us to be able to laugh and have a little bit of fun about this, but this is serious because there are times that we get so divided, so focused. And, and when in the world have we, have we not been able to, to have those differences and still, and still be able to fellowship together? But, the, what, but what has happened? The voices in the media, and we'll blame a lot of it on them. Or, or what are they doing? You, I, boy, you, I don't know if some of y'all do this. Switch back and forth between the two channels, the kind of the two main channels. Holy smoke, there's a way big, big difference in how they approach things. Isn't it? And so, but what, what do you do? If you only listen to what they say, pretty soon we begin to be so single-minded on that one thing. But here's the thing that trumps it all is God. The Word of God. And what it says, make sure you're not allowing the devil to stop you from receiving and walking in all that God has for you. Because here's the thing, he'll get you divided in your family. I know families that can't even, can't even come together and can't even meet because of, of things. I, I know issues, there are issues that we got to make sure that we can't let them divide us. And that's one of the ways that the devil, we need to be alert and sober minded. Because in this nation, we're still one nation. We're still Americans. Number one, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. If you're American, I don't care what race you are. You should be Americans. That's, that's the thing. You look at, not, I don't know why I'm getting on this, but I'm, I'm on it. So we're just going to keep going. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know, here's the, here's the thing. Think about what 9-11. I saw a post, and I don't remember who, whose it was. But in 9-11, what happened? No, but we became Americans. We stood up and we were, we were proud to be Americans. And now what do we see? I mean, there's people out there saying that, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm really going to get in trouble. But we got we to gotta take back this land. We got to stand for it. Now here, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing I want you to, amen. Here, here's, here's some of the things that, that I think is, it has stirred in me, the challenges that for us. And it may be for some that are out there, but there's, there's places and positions and, and, and of influence that may be on a local level and a small level, but they're an important level. And, and it's places like school boards. It's places like libraries. We need Christian people putting good things, American good things in libraries. Believe it or not, there's kids that still read. There's people that still read. And some of the stuff that's, that's, that's put up as the, the, at the forefront in some of those places ought not be there. But how does it get changed? It's by, it's by God-fearing people who love God stepping up and serving, being in those places. Many of you have already done that. We need to be, we need to be able to support good teaching. Good teaching in our schools. I listen. Up. We're very fortunate in Oklahoma. I mean, we're the I think the reddest of the red states. Which all that means, what that means, to me, is that we're still going to allow God to be honored for the most part. You know, there's at least still schools that are, aren't afraid to pray before a football game. There's still schools that are, are are able to say and 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 be proud to say the Pledge of Allegiance. We got a flag up here. We ain't taking that down. Amen. See, the devil loves to come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and, and I didn't intend on, and I didn't even really think a whole lot about that. So we're just going to assume that's the Holy Ghost and not my flesh. 
But see, some of you who, who, who may be challenged in some of these thinking, some of this thought, See, I just, I just ask you, just ask you is, is the division in this nation one of the ways that he tears us down? See, the devil, and, and there's many other ways, my goodness. There's some of the things that are, that are just as, as uh, different ways that the de- enemy would come in. But he says, be alert, be sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a luring lion, looking for someone who do, he can devour. Notice what it says. He says, resist him, steadfast, firm in the faith. See, this is the, the challenge that Peter was saying. He says, resist him. When, when, you, when we want to get derailed and focused on certain things, maybe things that wouldn't be as important, we need to make sure that we're careful. That's one of the reasons that I don't preach more on those types of things, because I never want to drive anybody away from the gospel that I have an opportunity to preach to them. That's why you don't hear me talk about that very much. It's not because I'm not passionate about it. It's absolutely not because that I don't care a lot about it. I've, I've had people say, well, you don't preach hard enough. Or you don't, you, I've, I've had people tell me I need to preach more on that kind of stuff. And I, I have people try to tell me what I need to preach. And I guarantee you I am asking one person who, what I need to preach. And that's God. As best I can. And if, and if I miss it, boy, I am on my face before him saying, Lord, forgive me. So I never want to drive anybody away. I always want to bring people in. But you know what? Sometimes we got to hear what is the truth. And the challenge of it is, is we got to resist the, him standing on faith. Because you know the family. Now notice this. Because you know the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. You know, he, Peter was challenging them. He says, resist the devil because he said, no, you're not in it alone. And that's where I got that scripture. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to get into all that other stuff. But here's the thing. No matter what you're experiencing, you, you may be experiencing times of loneliness, times of, of challenge, times of, of, of new transitions in life. Peggy's here for the first time uh, by herself. You know, those types of things, there, there's different things that we go through, different transitions that we go through. But I can tell you this, we're not, you're not in it alone because God is here to minister and, and will take care of us. And so I want to teach a little bit in my, few, in my minutes that I have left. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 18, 19, and, and I want us to be challenged with, with a, a word of, of praying in agreement. You know, one of the things that I, I, I want us to, uh, one of the things that I want us to, to take hold of here is I want us to take hold of the Word of God where the multiplication of two together is. You know, there's something about uh, when, we're, when we're alone or, or by ourselves in the stand that we take. But in, in Matthew 18, 19, he says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it'll be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. You know, this was a, this was a challenge to me, talking about the, the prayer requests. You know, one of the things about the prayer request for me is that I want to know what I'm praying for. Oftentimes people say, well, pray for me. And I say, well, what are we praying for? And they say, well, you know, God knows. Just, just pray. Well, I can pray a general prayer, but I like to know what specifically are we praying for. Are we believing God for the surgery to go well? Are we believing God for a, a, a miracle? Are we believing God for, for you know, the, what is it that we're, we're basing our prayer on? See, he gives us a a. And an added benefit to agreeing with somebody in prayer and the power of that. One of the things that I think that I find about prayer, the prayer of agreement and, and joining our faith together in, in praying is that whenever we do that, we can help to hold one another accountable and maintain that, that place of faith, that thing we're praying for until, the end, until, until we get the re, end result. You know, sometimes, uh, have you ever, have you ever, uh, thought something in your head and boy it sounded right sounded really really good i mean you know you you knew exactly what you were going to say and and it was it was spot on and then when you said it you were like ooh <laughs> that didn't sound real good you know sometimes you'll you'll catch me i'll be 
kind of dragging my spirit, slowing down. I'm pre-thinking what I'm going to say. I'm very careful and, and try to be very cautious because I know that people are listening and I know there's all I know there's people from every faith background and, 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 and denomination and I know there's people that are spinning things and I know when you tie this to that and I mean boy it's a it's a challenge up here sometimes I feel like I'm juggling. I'm trying to keep everybody happy. And you know what? Sometimes we're, we're thinking about what we say, but until it comes out, we don't realize what it's going to say. Sometimes that prayer of agreement, that might be the thing that, that helps us in praying in an agreement is to say, you know, here's what I'm believing God for, or here's what I'm asking for from the Father. And when you say it to that other person, all of a sudden you may realize, wait a minute, I'm, I'm missing this a little bit. There's something else that could be even more powerful, even, even better. You know, another thing about it is, is, is I think whenever we have somebody that agrees with us or stands with us, then we don't feel alone in that prayer, in that asking of the Lord, in the thing that we're approaching the throne of God for. You know, uh, have you ever, when I used to go to the Tulsa State Fair, when we'd show animals at the Tulsa State Fair, the kids would, uh, they, they had pony pools. And they'd have, you know, a guy with a team of ponies, and they'd be some little, and they did with the big, big horses, but it was fun to watch those little ponies, because they'd bring them old ponies up there, and they'd, boy, they'd be faunching a bit, and there'd be two of them, you know, in their, in their harness, and they'd be all strapped up, and they'd bring them up to that sled, and that sled was, was created, if you've never seen this, it, it increased the weight, so it dug in, and it weighed more, and so they, they saw how far the, that team of ponies could pull. Well, you know, if you take, they say if you take one pony, they can pull a certain amount of pounds. But when you put two together, it multiplies it. So this is kind of the dynamic that we're seeing in, in a prayer of agreement. And partly because I think one thing we begin to maybe be more clear when we communicate to somebody else, more clear what we're praying for. See, sometimes people say, well, pray for me. And I got no idea. Well, let, let me ask you something. If you don't know what you're asking for, how are you going to know when you get it? You say, well, I just trust it to God. Well, you can get by like that. But when God gives us the ability to, to speak and, and pray some things specifically, boy, I tell you what, I want to take every advantage I can because I remember and know that there's a devil out there like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour, and I want to be able to stand against it and overcome every area of, uh, of every uh, one of those areas. So uh, here in, uh, let's, let's look at... Uh, a couple of things that I wrote down is what is agreement? First of all, when we pray in agreement, we have to get specific in what it is we're asking for. And you know, one of the things that's critical to that is, is it God's will? If it, there's things that are very clearly stated in the Word of God. God wants us to take the Word, that's where our faith is established, and put that within our prayer. You know, if I'm praying for, let's say, finances, I'm, I'm asking God to bless me. Has anybody ever prayed for help with your finances? You can raise your hand. Maybe I ought to say, has anybody not? <laughs> right? Okay, so what is so so? Whenever I say, "Lord, help me," I remember when Sue and I were first married. I mean, we didn't have two nickels to run to, rub together. What did they say? A pot to anyway. I didn't have one of those pots either. <laughs> See y'all, y'all know that know that you came from the same place. My, my mama's background, I guess you you knew that, and or a window to throw it out of. Yeah, anyway, th that's the story. Well, see, we didn't have those things, and so we were praying, God help us where our finances are concerned. Now we can pray a general prayer of God help us where our finances are concerned, or we can go into God's Word and see what God has said about our finances. He said if we'll give in Malachi, he said if we'll tithe, he'll open the windows of the storehouse of heaven and pour out a blessing we can't contain. So I see tithing is important. He saw, we saw that. We saw where he talked about first fruits. Now don't get uncomfortable because I'm talking about money. Understand, we've all pray, we all raised our hands and say we've prayed for God to bless it. So I want to look at all the different ways that I can take the scripture and add agreement with what God has said, me and God, and then in our case, me and my wife, well, God, what did you say about those things? When I begin to look through, through the book of Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs would talk about lazy doesn't get it. Right? right? He'd say diligence 
gets a return. So trusting God, he says, bring God the first fruits and, and your barns will be full. I mean, there's, there's all those promises within God's word. And so I began to say, okay, God, am I, am I going down through my checklist of what your will is and what you've said? And can I, can I say, can I go before God and say, God, bless me, provide for me, supply for me, According to your word. So I'm putting myself in agreement. What about where giving and tithing was concerned? So then Sue and I would say, we come before God and say, God, we need help financially. We need an increase. Okay, there's, so we say, okay, God, here we're taking, we're doing what you said. We're going to tithe. We're going to give. We're going to be obedient to put you first. And as we did that, then we, put, then we had something to agree on and something clearly from God's will, God's word, His promise to apply. So then I could expect that prayer to be answered. Now, when you start talking about how that's going to be answered, then you start looking at some other things. You know, one of the things we ask for where finances are concerned is not just more money, but we, if we're want, looking at it God's way, we ought to be looking at it from an area of wisdom. You know, sometimes we can't make more. Have you ever been in that position where you just feel like you're at the top of your pay scale? You just can't make more. Or, or, or maybe you take an extra job, but you can only work two. You can't work three. I've worked three before, but they were, all, you know, part-time or whatever. But, I mean, you do that extra, whatever it is, and you're working for more income. And then I learned something one day. God would give me wisdom in stewardship so that I didn't need more income. I just needed to change the outgo. So there's been a few times whenever I had to repent of God and I say, okay, God, I want your blessing. I'm doing everything you've said. I'm praying and believing for your promise. But then I also, then I needed God maybe change. Maybe I bought a new pickup because I wanted one. Didn't need it, but I wanted one. Everybody wants to have everything, right? You want, so you bought it, and then what you got? A big old payment. Well, if you can't afford the payment, see what I'm saying? Sometimes the blessing of God, the power of agreement, the prayer, and see what happened was because we were in agreement that we were getting to this place, then we were willing to hear God in changing what we needed to change. Sometimes just that prayer, those things that we're praying for, you, you, you need to kind of flesh out a little bit or you need to talk through those things. And if you have an agreement with somebody, you can say, well, I'm believing God for this or this is what I'm praying for. And here's the scriptures that back that up. And they might say, well, you know what? Here's another scripture. We say, yeah, I, I can agree on that. And so together, you're, you're strengthening one another's faith. You've clarified what you're praying for, what you're asking for. And then also, you've, you've uh, determined maybe what is God's will and what's some other things, other areas that we need to tweak or change in. You know, it's pretty amazing uh, other areas that, that God would begin to work on where prayer of agreement is concerned. Let's, let's say there's something that, uh, like a loved one or somebody you're praying for. You begin to lift that person up in prayer, and you're praying for them, you're praying for them, you're praying for them, and you bring your best friend into the, into the mix. Say, I want you to pray with me for my child that's not serving God, or you want me to pray whatever. They may have something to add that increases your faith, that opens up a level, another level of prayer and lets you see something you didn't see before. See, it doesn't have to be your, your spouse, but, but sometimes there, there can be some clarity that comes as a result of coming in a, together in agreement in prayer. One of the biggest things, though, as I wrap this up for tonight, is one of the things that, that I think is so important is that oftentimes when people are asking for prayer, there's no, no basis from the Word of God for what they're praying. Do you ever just... Just pray. See, we ought to try to go to God's Word on every one of those prayers. See what God says about it. Take any need that you have. Begin. You say, how do I do that? Well, if you've got a good study Bible, back there in the back, it'll have words. And it'll give you scriptures that are tied to them. And then a lot of times there's references within that one. And you can jump over from this one to that one. And your electronic phones kind of come into handy sometimes. You can search that word and it'll give you a whole bunch of scriptures. But I can tell you, that I use mine for that. But I can tell you this, that power of agreement, the, and I'll close with this for tonight. 
One of the greatest things that the, the prayer of agreement does is it helps us get through times where our faith begins to falter. You're not in it alone. See, there's times when Sue and I would be believing God for something and nothing seems to change. We'd be praying and it seems like nothing's working. There's still more month at the end of the money or that, that illness or that sickness doesn't seem to change or these answers don't seem to come. We don't know how we're going to do it and I'm faltering and she says, but God. Another time she'd be faltering and I say, but we've stood on the word, but the word says. See, when you come into agreement in prayer, you multiply, and that's what he said, where he said that, that where two or more get, or agree, or where two agree, he said, man, you move mountains. You, God, God moves. So I just challenge you. You say, well, you know, and, I, and, I, and let me just add this. This is, this is free. This is, this is, you know, this is just extra, but it's free. For, for some of you men don't like to pray in front of anybody, Especially if you're, if you're married and you want to look really sexy, pray. Guarantee you, you'll, you'll, that's why I pray so good. <laughs> like to impress my wife. <laughs> no, no in, in all seriousness, you, in all seriousness, if you want to capture your partner's heart, pray and allow them to see what you're really believing for. When I was young, a young man in the Lord, my, my, my wife wasn't impressed with how eloquent I pray. You don't have to use, use these and thous. You don't have to sound really great. All she's interested in is your heart and knowing that you're looking to God. You know what? She'll kind of help fill, if she's the more one who's more versed in the Bible, she'll help you. She'll fill in those gaps. Maybe you're the one who's, 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 who's a, little, a little deeper in those things. Maybe you just say, well, I'm just private. My wife's private. She don't like sharing a whole lot of stuff. We don't talk a lot about some of those things. But here's the one thing we will do. We'll say, you know what? This right here, we're going to agree. And she says, amen. We, now, we've been doing this long enough. We kind of know. We don't have to spend a lot of time necessarily in that. But just mentioning those things. Just choosing to say, I'm going to pray. I'm going to trust God. And you know what? Then you begin to strengthen one another. You, you might say, well, I don't, I don't have anybody. You're still not in it alone. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got God. And you know what? He'll help to bring you, if you need it, somebody. I have people message me all the time. I, I, I mean, you can get on Facebook, you can find me. You can, I'm on Messenger. You can find me. And you can Now I don't, I mean... Uh, if I don't respond immediately, just relax. But you can text and say, this is what I'm praying for. This is what I'm believing for. You can make a phone call. We can, we, you know, I'll, I'll agree with you or I'll point you to. There's people that will pray. If you desire to do it, God will bring it together. Well, listen, I want to wrap this up tonight, but uh, I, I didn't even cover hardly any of my notes. But I, I want you to know and understand that you're not alone. Even if you're now single and you weren't before. I know there's widows, widows here. There's people here who, who maybe didn't expect to be in the place that you're in in this moment, in this time. But I can tell you this, that God is with you. You may be in a position and in a place that, that you don't feel like you have that person, but I believe God will bring those, those people to you. And if you're watching or if you're here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, the beginning point to it all is to make Jesus Lord. Just give up. <laughs> Quit being hard-headed. Put your trust in Him. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you tonight. And Lord, we just lift, you, lift this service, this time up to you. Lord, as we, as we get ready to go to the top and pray. Father, if there's anybody here who, who either feels alone because they don't have anybody to pray, I pray that you just stir them to boldness to come and, and let us agree with them. Lord, if there's anybody within the sound of my voice, both on, online or here, that has not made Jesus Christ Lord, I pray that you just draw them. I know the Holy Spirit right now is just absolutely getting after you. You're not sure. You've never committed. Maybe you've committed in the past, but you just, you just need to settle tonight. I'm making Jesus my Lord. It's a very simple prayer. 
that we come before the Lord and we say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that Jesus died for my sin and I need that forgiveness. I need that gift of salvation. Just say that, say that, Lord Jesus, be my Lord. Forgive me. Make me new. Come into my heart, come into my life. Now, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you, you, you made Jesus Lord, then, you, then I'd challenge you, meet me. Message me. Find us online. And Father God, for anybody tonight who just feels like they're in this alone, I pray that you let them know they're absolutely not alone. Because the creator of the universe knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what you're crying out for. He knows exactly what you need. And I thank you that he'll not only meet you right there personally, but he'll also bring you someone around you to stand as your prayer partner to agree with you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Krakens. Amen. Have you been blessed tonight? You still love me even if I got on you a little bit? (laughs) Amen. Well, I tell you what. We can disagree and still love one another, but I tell you what, we can't we can't sh- 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 shirk or we can't we can't be without. That's the word of God, Amen. We're going to go up for prayer. McCrackens are going to come and minister. Let's give them another round of applause. If you need prayer, come up and meet us. One thing that he brought to mind, uh, our preacher's son preached a message one time and I can't remember the whole story but he at the end of it he said remember God's always got the last move so no matter what you're going through or when you're feeling down and lonely God's still there with you he's always got the last move to to honor us and and give us what we desire in our heart if we diligently seek after him well we wasn't planning on doing this one tonight but it just fits so good Hang on to this one. Because we all come through this time when we come through a little part of our life where, uh, like he, he said something there tonight about, you know, that sometimes the devil can show up as an, in, as an angel of light. So sometimes you can be doing something you think is really, really a good deal. And it may be, but it may not be where, where yours, may not be your deal. May not be where God wants you, and and so we went through a deal like that with with, uh, with a business, and and uh, we thought we was doing exactly what God wanted us to do for what we wanted out of it, and we was actually doing what God wanted us to do, but, but it was for somebody else, and uh, that was tough because that was not what we had planned, but through that we learned that uh, I can't even walk without holding without holding His hand, and um, that's where we're at with a lot of this stuff. And I don't know why we don't have no music right there. So let's back up and I'll throw that at you again. You ready?
talks about the mountain being too high and the valley being too wide. And I think he mentioned mountain in his sermon there. But, you know, I heard a deal the other day. It talked about, you know, when we're, we're climbing up that mountain, you know, if our mountains was smooth, that'd be hard to climb, wouldn't they? So if there's not a rough spot or two in our mountains, we may, we may never make it to the top. So you got to be thankful for the good times and for the bad times of, of what you're going to learn through those situations and stuff. And, and uh, it's just, uh, I thought that was a pretty good, pretty good deal about if the mountains were smooth, it'd be tough to get up. the news nowadays and not realize that the Lord's right around the corner, man. He's just got to be. And what a day that'll be. There's coming a day when no heartache shall come.
We um, haven't really talked a whole lot about what, who we are, what we do, or anything, and that's not really what we come here for. We're not here to tell you about us. We're here to tell you about him. But every time we go somewhere, somebody says, why didn't you tell us about what you do? So uh, we ain't here to entertain you. If you want to be entertained by what we do, we'll come to one of our rodeos and we'll see how we can get along there. But uh, this is a serious deal for me. I mean, God has blessed us tremendously. He's let us go places I never dreamed I'd ever be able to go. And, and what I wanted to do after I started seeking him, you know, that word says, seek him first, put him first, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And man, I went for a long time trying to figure that out. But um, we're not here to entertain you, and we'll never come here to entertain you. We're here to introduce you to a man that's saved my life, saved her life, and and uh, and I just hope that you can get her, get your head around that a little bit, because um, you know we get in arguments all the time about rapture this or rapture that, the raptures after that you go through this, you go through that, and all that stuff. But I think we were mentioned about some folks that you guys have just lost. We just lost a dear friend. We're going to Stephenville, Texas, in the morning, and right back home, and into Illinois to our next show. Uh, we lost her, and and. Um, Last time I seen her, secretary in the rodeo, and she, um, I never had no idea that'd be the last time I got to see her. So I, I get what you're saying, Brother Kelly, about being careful and not wanting to step on nobody's toes, but I'd rather break your window out now is for you to see on down the road that why didn't you tell me about that? So that's what we're doing. Is we're here to tell you about that. There's a man that can fix, fix it. He can fix this. He's the only thing that'll fill that hole in your heart. Or, I'm just so thankful to that there was an old man when we first got married <laughs> that lived right across the street from us, and he was about that tall and about that big around. He was just a little old skinny guy, and his name was Eddie. And any time that me and her was going to do anything out in the yard, well, here'd come little old Eddie across the street there to help us, you know. And and uh, Eddie never preached to me. He never uh, never beat me up or took after me on anything about I was doing this wrong or that wrong. Eddie just lived his life before me. And I learned a lot from that guy. And this song came along a long time ago, and it really reminded, it always reminded me of him, and we started, started doing it in that way, and, and uh, so it's important. There's, you know, I don't care if you're a kid or an old person, uh, people are watching you, and it's so important what we show them. We show them so much sometimes, I showed them so much uh, the wrong light. And um, sometimes we're the only Bible they read. And if it don't mean nothing to us, it ain't going to mean nothing to them. So don't be telling people to do these things. Show them. And that, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. But uh, I hope this speaks to you like The old man regularly lived in a little white house. Down the street. Broke a friendship up. We spent a few long summers out on his old front porch swing. Says he's in the war, went in the navy, lost his wife, lost his baby. Well, I broke down and asked him one time, how you keep from going? Well, he said, I'll see my wife and my son in just a little while. I asked him what he meant. He looked at me and said,
Aren't you glad you hung around? I tell you what, you know, I, I don't know all that the Lord was going to do tonight, but, uh, you know, I think about the way that God's tied all this together, and I, I hope that you were encouraged tonight and strengthened and, and uh, just want you to know that we love you, and uh, we want to pray as we get ready to close, and Kevin's going to pray. Lord, thank you for Kelly and his family. Um, thank you for the McCrackens. Thank you, Lord. Um, ministry tonight was awesome. Um, be with this country. We really need you. Yes, Lord. We know you're there. You're always there. Yes. Um, if there's anybody out there, as Dan used to say, uh, we won't put any pressure on you. Um, Kelly will talk to you. One of us elders can. You, you really need to make that decision, like Gizmo said, bust that window wide open. Yes. I know I did years ago, and it really helped a rotten guy turn into a decent guy sometimes. But um, anyway, uh, just thank you for all you do in our life, Lord, and be with everybody as they go home this evening. Amen. Yes, Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you what, you guys go have a blessed rest of your week, and we'll see you back here next week. Bring somebody with you, Larry DeWalder, the family, the, the Barney Five. If you've never heard them before, he, they're funny, but they can really sing. They are phenomenal singers, their family. So be sure and be here.